Good morning. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're so glad you're here. It is still strange to be virtual and talking at a box and knowing that you're all out there. Um, but the fact that you're here is something that we appreciate and we enjoy spending time with you in whatever the platform. Uh, my name is Jess Jones. I'm the center director here at the Coffer Member Resource Center, the Coffer Center, uh, right next door to the Chicago local SAG after office. Um, we are the local space that serves and provides resources sources to union performers and professionals. And this is how we do it virtually uh, these days. Um, so we are grateful for this opportunity to be able to sit down with some of our friends in the casting offices. And we are excited about the conversation that we're about to have. Before we get into um, business today, we are both live here on Zoom as well as on Facebook. So for your Zoom audience, uh, thank you for registering and pre-fielding your questions. We have submitted them to casting. So we have um, sent a bunch of questions their way and they've engaged with those and already know some of the things that are really important to, to press today. Um, so we will be addressing the questions that many of you have pre-submitted. So thank you so much for doing that. If you're joining us on Facebook, hello, welcome. Thank you for being there as well. Uh, we'll do our best to bring in questions as well as they come up, um, but know that we are gonna respect the time that our friends have given us today and try to drive this next half hour with as much purpose and you know, <laughs> meaning as powerful uh, that helps you do your work from home. Um, Coffer Member Resource Center, the Coffer Center is here for you as well. So I'm just gonna remind you of that up top. As you have questions about how to do for yourself some of these things at home, we're here for you. You could always get uh, a hold of us, myself, Jess Jones, or our media technician, Henrique. Uh, CofferCenterChicago.com is our website. And you can email us through the site and we could do individual appointments with you if you need help addressing any of the technical side of things or audition situation questions you might have as far as how you do for yourself at home, what we've all been so used to doing in the casting offices. Um, so please know that this is not your mountain to climb alone. We're here with you and we're here advocating for you uh, to make this task as manageable as possible. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. But without further ado, I want to invite our friends to the conversation. Um, we're so grateful to have many of the ladies from Claire Simon's office join us today. Today we have Claire Simon, Cameron, Tanisha, and Cassidy, all from Simon Casting, joining us today. Ladies, hello, <laughs> friends. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, so before we get talking, before we get talking shop, Thumbs up down middle. How's everybody doing in this moment of time? <laughs> we're hanging. We're hanging. That's Only good. One thumb from the bottom row. <laughs> one, one thumb. You know, sometimes one thumb is all you got. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a strange world. So I'm, I'm glad to see your faces. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Um, you know, I, I just want to, I want to dive on in and start just by asking what has virtual casting and remote casting been like? I mean, this is, has turned the whole model on its head as far as how things get managed. So I think I'm just going to well, hand the medical talking stick to you guys, start by saying, what is this now? <laughs> well, I'll start and then I'll let Cassidy and Tanisha dive in too, because they've been actually working the actual sessions um you know so pd and fire are back up and running we've been back up and running for about a month um everything is virtual right now um there are no in-person auditions at all um and i don't see that changing by the end of the year either especially with the surge of the virus it would just be too many people in one place and too dangerous um so, you know, we still have the casting concept call. We still uh, do the breakdown. We still do everything as we normally would. It's just that everything is um, self-taped now. Um, but on the plus side of that, um, I was just telling somebody yesterday that the good part about that is, you know, usually I create a schedule and I bring in five people per role into the director. And then we'd have a day of pre-reads prior to that. And maybe we'd get to see 15 to 20 people for pre-reads to hear the words on them. But now that it's self tapes, I'm able to like uh, select the people I know are, you know, are, are strong actors that I know and love. I'm able to call in people, I think maybe have 
you know, um, are ready for a bigger role, but I'm not sure. And then I'm ready to call on people who just have cool faces that look the role. So I'm actually able to see probably three times as many people as I normally would under normal situations because I'm up every morning at six. So I'm, what else is there to do but work? So I'm looking at tapes all the time. So it does, I think it gives the actors more opportunities actually. Um, Cassidy and Tanisha have been working on like the actual session. So I'll let them to speak to how different it is now. Yeah, so we've done a couple virtual, you know, callback sessions, which was really fun <laughs> to try and do. Um, I think the most important thing for the actors to remember is just, it's no different than a regular audition as, you know, as if you were going to come into our office. So it's still really important to, you know, be 10 minutes early in that waiting room, whether it's Zoom or Ecocast Live. Um, and another really important thing, like piggybacking off of the tapes that Claire was mentioning, um, it's really important to, we send out like instructions of, you know, things we want you to follow when you're taping your audition. So, you know, it's really important to look at those because they change um, from project to project. But overall, I think it's really important right now um, to maybe invest in like a tripod for your camera so it isn't shaky. Um, I know a lot of actors use their iPhones and there's no problem with that, but you just wanna make sure you're not holding it like a selfie. Um, let's see what else. Oh, uh, I think basic video editing comes in handy right now. Um, you know, just kind of cutting the ends of your video when you're out of character and then you turn your camera off. Like we, we don't want to see that. So we want you to be able to go in and just cut that little part out before you send it over to us. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just making sure that you are watching your tapes before you send them in. Um, we've had, I know I've seen one with like some pets walking in the background and as cute as they are, we're like, oh, you could have probably retaped that before you sent it over, you know? Um, so I think just following the directions that we send out um, and just treating virtual auditions as if you were really coming into our office and auditioning in person. Yeah, I feel like the same as Cassie. I don't think I have much to add to that. You just like, it's basically the same thing and you just need to prepare yourself as if you were walking in the room with the directors and the producers because you will and you know so you just have to carry yourself the same way and actually you do have a little bit more of an advantage now that you are you know doing it from home because you can do like 50 takes and like send the best one so <laughs> definitely take advantage of that and give it your best so so hearing hearing how this is going though how what is the process now you know people are used to just getting that call working on their material sitting in your waiting room and you know that is a process that they've got muscle memory what is the process now for those that haven't gotten a virtual audition request from your office at this point well, the process is that we send out the auditions to the agents but we ask for self tapes and then i don't know what happens when the agents contact the actors um, and then you get a deadline to get the tape to us. And you really have to adhere to that because there's a cutoff. Like you, if the cutoff is one o'clock today for a Chicago PD audition after one o'clock, you can't submit it. So if you have to go to the dentist or whatever, like you can't get in there anymore. And there's a reason for the deadlines. We have to get them to our directors in a timely fashion because everything's taking longer now. Like the shoot dates are now nine days instead of eight days because of all the testing. One thing I want to say to all of you guys, um, uh, as far as self tapes is, it's surprising how many people don't look at their tapes before they send them out. I mean, this is you put it, this is your product. So you, you know, you can do 50 takes and you can look at them and see for yourself if you would cast that person in the audition. You want to make sure it looks amazing. And um, you have to have a reader, like I, I or you have to have, um, you know, you can get someone on Zoom to read opposite you, or you can have someone tape it, but you can't submit a tape with nobody doing the other lines. I can't even tell you how many we get where somebody just forgets the other person's lines and just does theirs and there's nothing going on that will never, that will never get sent on to a director. Um, and keep in mind, like, I don't think people understand, like for um, police officers and firemen cannot have facial hair. So if you've got a big old Santa Claus beard, um, you either have to be willing to shave that off for the audition or um, just don't take the audition because, you know, in a creative industry, it's remarkably not creative. 
you know, and when you're working with really tight deadlines, they're looking for the fireman to be there right now, as opposed to like, if he shaved and if I had him do this and if we rehearsed, maybe he could get there like they do in theater. So, you know, the more the, the more there's less to, left to the imagination for whoever's on the other side and the better for you guys. So the more you look like a firefighter on the audition or, you know, if you're a lawyer, you should have a suit coat on. You could be standing there with no pants. That's okay. As long as you have a suit coat and a tie on and you look businessy, but just, just when you look at your audition before you send it out, ask yourself, does that look like a fireman, a policeman? For a policeman, you know, like blue button down or a leather jacket or whatever, just the more you embody that role and look like that role and leave less to the imagination of who's working, you know, who's seeing it, the better. Um, I also did a class yesterday. I went in as a, a callback class and all the actors had backgrounds. I guess they're like these big round black backgrounds you can buy for yourself and they're blue, but it made the, the self tape look really good. Um, so that's an idea too. Just make sure yeah. you're looking good too. And, and, I'll, and I'll chime in on that because I'll say, you know, and this is something we've talked about in a, in a previous stream too. A lot of this stuff has actually gotten, those types of materials have actually gotten marked down during the course of this time, because there's been more demand, so people have competitively priced it. So where the thing you used to say costs too much and isn't worth the investment, it might be now, especially to Claire's point, that this isn't going away soon, and it's also cheaper than it's been before. So if you are thinking of ever making the investment, now might be the time, because you can get things like you know that pop-up backdrop, the tripod that Cassidy's talking about. This might be the time and backing up a couple of beats too. We can help you figure out how to use these tools you've never used before, the Coffer Center, myself and Henrique. And to Claire's point too, there's also no reason to not have a reader. We can do sessions with members if you need to have a reader. Um, you just need to get a hold of us and let us know what you need. And we'll do our best, especially with deadlines to try to help you get your tape done. But um, you bring up a point about the timetables changing too. And, and somebody uh, submitted the question, how much longer ahead of time does Claire put out her casting call since it takes more time to get COVID testing done prior to work? So how does that affect how people should expect the work to come across their way and how much more time do you have to prep or, or do you have more time to prep? I'll let you answer it, Tanisha. Um, we have a little, I mean, I think we have a little bit more time to prep now just with the way our production schedules are at the moment. Um, but I think we still try to get our things out as early as we can. Like the moment we have it breaking down and we're done with our call, we have our breakdowns out once they're approved. So um, we try to get a leg up on the casting so that we can see as many people and get the best people for our directors and producers, just in case they have any um, like pushback. But I think like the, the, um, the production schedule is a little bit longer for the COVID. So they are doing a lot of testing before you're even like booked. So it's just making the production go a little bit like it's intense in, in terms of days that you need to be available because um, they need to test you before they actually book you. And then once you're booked, they need to test you before you get to set. And then if you're like on a weekly, they need to test you like every day and days in between. So yeah, there's a, a lot more, I think, commitment from the actor's time now that there's these COVID yeah. tests and stuff. If you really need to be available at least a week, a week and a half before the shoot date. Um, and right now, all the verbiage when we book somebody is, you know, I'm booking Tanisha contingent on a negative COVID test, which means if, if we want to book her and she comes in and tests positive, then they're not on the hook financially at all for her booking if, in, unless she tests negative. Does that make sense? But if she tests negative and she's wardrobed and she comes in on the day of her booking and she tests positive, they still have to pay her. So, um, but there's a lot, that's why a lot, you know, a lot of times we book people maybe who are coming in from Wisconsin or coming in from Michigan and are willing to drive in. And now the, now we had to narrow that down to only in Illinois because there's such a time commitment to come in for that initial test and then wardrobe and then to come test every day before you're booked. Um, that it's like, it's not doable if you live more than like two or three hours away. And I imagine just when, when people have auditioned for the show and might have been, had their availability checked, 
um, even as the episode starting, if the booking hasn't gone their way, they should continue to think that there's a possibility this could go their way because there's so many variables. I mean, is there anything you want to speak to about how an actor even wraps their head around what their time looks like as far as who it, who it might belong to after an audition? Well, what happens is we have an audition and we'll, this is, this is our process is we'll have our audition. I'll send the director six to eight of our top selects from that role. And then he'll select two. And then we send it to the exec producer and he'll pick his choice. Then we send it to LA to the showrunner and he'll choose. And then we have to get approval from NBC. So in between that time, we'll put those two people on a check of ale. Um, that the director has chosen and we keep even even when they have chosen um cameron is their first choice and we've sent her to nbc for network approval we leave the second choice on a check because cameron might get COVID, and then it's going to go to the, the director's other choice so people might be put on check avail for a little longer than normal too because they're also a choice and it's very likely that somebody could get an, a, a positive test result and then it would go to that that other choice if, if that I hope that answers your question. No, no, that absolutely does. And I mean, I think, you know, these, these are all the small ways that people have to change their mind about what, you know, I mean, I think there's like, sometimes there's been that magical thinking about what does the check avail mean and what does the release mean and what, you know, and right now you really have to be in it for the, the long game because there are so many variables that you could <laughs> end up getting a call and you're a top, uh, you're the top, one of the top two. Right. Right, right. Um, but I think, you know, there's that thing of trying to temper your expectations. And right now, it's hard to know what to expect, because there's so many variables that I think it's, I mean, hearing that explanation, I think is helpful, because it helps contextualize the timetables that everyone else is kind of treading through after the actor gets that check avail, you know. And we had a couple of frustrations in the beginning, because like, we'd have somebody on check avail, and then we'd need them to test. And the agent would be like, they're in Detroit right now, they went to go see their aunt. And we're like, ha ha, ha you know, because you, you just have to be available. You have to be, you just have to be totally flexible and available. And it's not that we don't know people have their own lives, but if you're put on check avail, you sort of need to be held captive by us. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and I think it's just as important to not make any moves, you know, unless you talk to somebody that's part of your representation team or others so that they could give you a peek behind the curtain of what's happening right now. So that everybody knows kind of the lay of the land and it doesn't put anyone you know, in the wind in the casting process. Um, so question somebody asks, because um, a lot of these, we're talking about self tapes and things pre, you know, the actual production process. Are there virtual callbacks that are happening then creative sessions and, and specifically a question connecting virtually, are there common mistakes or best practices you've noticed for actors that book Zoom or callback auditions? Cassie, you want to take this one? Yeah, um, so we just did uh, a Zoom callback not too long ago for a commercial. And some of the stuff I was noticing, um, it's really important, if possible, to get on a secure Wi-Fi network. So like a secure home network, preferably not a shared network. Like I would not grab Starbucks Wi-Fi and like try to do an audition because the problem with that is then when we connect with you, we're getting like weird, it's choppy, you're cutting out and then it's just kind of like awkward. So it's really important to try and find um, you know, a home Wi-Fi network that you can use. And it's also really helpful if nobody else is streaming like Netflix or Hulu on that same Wi-Fi network while you're auditioning. Um, because that just, I it just kind of interferes sometimes. Um, the other really important thing is being able to adjust as necessary. So in this callback, we had a director kind of ask if the actor could move around because the lighting was a little weird and she was able to you know, pick up her laptop, move around until the director was like, okay, that's great. We can see you right here. So that's really important too, to just um, to be able to move. Um, the lighting is also really important um, because you're not in front of us in our studio. We can't control that. So we ask that you either, I know some actors have used a ring light, which is really, it looks really nice in tapes. Or if you don't have that, I would try to be in front of a, nap, uh, a window with natural lighting, but not behind you because that creates shadow and you're backlit and it, we can't, it, you just can't see anything. Um, so, and like I said before, the other thing is we'll always send instructions, please, 
please read them. We write them for a reason. And it's usually, all, usually all your questions will be asked before you log into your virtual audition. Um, I know for Zoom um, and Ecocast Live, you're in a waiting room. So when you are in that waiting room, it's important to be ready to go because your camera can turn on at any moment and clients will be present. So it's really important that you, you know, use the restroom or do whatever you have to do before you get into the waiting room. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I I saw in the last callback that we did. That and, and something you just said brings up another question. How much and what platforms are people using when they're getting virtual calls? Are you using Ecocast Live? Is that a preferred platform? Are you ever using Zoom? Like what does the virtual process mostly look like with you? We've done both. So we've done Zoom and Ecocast Live and they both um, have their perks, I think. Um, but I think they really both come down to the internet connection that I brought up earlier. Like, cause on both of them, that's usually where we're gonna get the best quality is if you're able to secure um, to a home Wi-Fi network. That makes sense. Um, okay, so I know I've been asking a lot of these questions with the presumption that the folks that are asking these questions are coming in and being seen by you all regularly. For the folks that are trying to figure out how to break in and, and clear, you know, you've mentioned that there's a larger volume of auditions you can field now because there are, you know, more self tapes being requested than just coming in the room appointments. How do people get on, on your radar right now? People want to know, is it postcards? Is it social media? Are you doing generals? What, so what is the lay of the land for someone that isn't already kind of in rotation with your office? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, at the, <coughs> at the beginning of the pandemic, we had a big general audition that we're actually still going through because there were like 2000 submissions, which was awesome. Um, you know, gosh, it used to be like we went to shows and saw everybody in theater and, you know, send us invitations. I would say, you know, we have meals for monologues every year for like the last 11 years. And last year we had about, um, we had almost 700 people show up. And that is a great way to be seen and to give back. And, you know, it was, it's a great day all around. And we meet a lot of new faces, a lot of people who are, you know, it's, it's a great way to see where people are at in their growth that we know. Um, and it's also a great way to meet new people. So this year we were like, I don't know what we're going to do because we obviously can't have 700 people into our, into our session. So actually right before we started this meeting, we had a meeting about it. We're going to have our meals for monologues this year. And it's going to be, instead of food, it's going to be donations to uh, the Actors Fund. And um, because we wanted to give back to the to our community, because um, I know there are a lot of people hurting, so it's going to be um, a five dollar donation, and it's going to be straight to the Actors Fund. We're going to have nothing to do with the money portion, so you can donate five dollars to five bazillion dollars, um, preferably the bazillion dollars would be great. Um, we're just trying to figure out the logistics of scheduling it. Um, and it will be before Thanksgiving because we want the money to be there for people during the holidays because I know it's going to be tough. So that's a way to be seen. Um, you can for sure s send your headshots in the snail mail kind of way. Um, I, I, I only preface by saying that we're not in the office very often, maybe once a week these days. And um, we're not having in-person casting sessions. So I guess the best way to be seen is like to... Um, you know, get an agent in town and have them submit your materials. Cause that's right now, that's where we're getting all our people, you know, all our actors from, um, and, um, coming to open calls. We do have generals, you know, a couple times a year, and that's a great way to be seen too. Um, that's probably the only virtual way right now, um, before we can open up our office and have people come in for generals. Do you guys have and, any and specific Specific question I want to ask in the context of talking about mailings and things like this. What is your feeling about unrepresented actors sending photos, resumes, links to video clips? I, I think people have gone both ways. And now I, you know, I wonder if people feel more like they should be dropping into your email inbox um, where I would have said no, no, unless solicited because we don't want that to, you know, inundate you while you're trying to actually get people work. But now if the mail is not being checked, still, still send hard copy or go through an agent or what's your feeling yeah, I, I still don't think it's a great idea to send unsolicited emails to a, a 
casting person's um, email box unless unless somebody's introduced you, unless somebody's like made an introduction. Um, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. We get so much email every day and um, there isn't time to go through every single, you know, random submission. You're much better off getting an agent who will promote you or coming to an open call where it's specifically to meet new faces. Do you guys have any? Yeah, I would say, um, I, I know before all this happened, I loved getting postcards. Um, you know, actors would just let me know what show they were in, um, when it was playing, how I could go see it. Um, and that was really helpful for me because I had it in front of me and I remembered it. Um, I agree with Claire. I, there's just no way we have time to go through all those emails. Um, but I think it's still okay to send postcards. We're still in the office like a couple times a week, like maybe not all together, but we're still there. And I think those are still the best ways to, um, to let us know what you're up to. Right. Um, I'm going to answer a question from below in the same regard. Are you bringing in any actors without representation? Um, or are you, are you fielding anything for real people to self-submit or unrepresented actors to self-submit or is it predominantly through self-tape requests through agencies? Do you want to answer that, Tanisha? Did you say, is it all primarily through self-tapes? I'm sorry. Uh, is, it, is it predominantly through requested auditions through people submitted via their agent or are you fielding any self-submit you know, or real people type of audition requests? Well, it is mainly through agent submissions and actors access, um, but we still do like have like go to direct people. Um, there's a lot of people that like on actors access sometimes we'll just go in and put in the criteria of the roles that we're looking for and then like find new faces that way. Um, we're also getting new faces from our spring open call. So a lot of the people that submitted through there, um, we're bringing them in to read or calling them in to self-tape for us. Um, I think another way probably to get on the radar if you don't have like an agent, um, like Cassidy was saying, like do send your like postcards. But I know that a lot of people are doing like webisodes and making their own webisodes and things like that. So like if there's something like that that you're doing and like you can put that on your postcard with your headshot, I think that would be another good way that we can see new talent through virtually. There are so many good questions and I'm already gonna apologize if we can't get to all of them um, because I wanna respect this, the time that these ladies are giving us. Um, and I will do my best to answer some of these if anybody wants to email me afterwards, because I do know some of these and we can take some of these questions offline. Um, a question I have also uh, going back to Chicago-based work and Chicago-based actors and not traveling. Somebody asks, some LA and New York shows require talent who are currently residing. Um, so is that true for Chicago guest stars, co-stars recurring? Are you seeing different types of roles requiring currently residing in Chicago or how is that are Chicagoans getting access to different scale of roles just because of the nature of the local work? Well the Chicago actors have act I mean when we send out um, roles that are guest stars and day players I mean I see all my Chicago people for all the roles you know I would say for a guest star role there there's a budget to possibly fly somebody in you know, and, and like Jonathan in New York will be looking for those roles as well. So there's there's a budget to um, potentially fly somebody in and put them up. Um, for the day player roles, we used to see a lot of people who are willing to be local hires, you know, because they're not gonna fly somebody in for a one day role. Um, that's changed a lot. Now they're like, just please make sure everybody is at least two hours from Chicago and can drive in several times for the test because the tests change, the schedules change on a dime and they just really do not have the bandwidth to, to um, work around one day player's schedule to get them in to be tested. So they just need everyone to be close by and available. Um, Cause you know, this is all new territory for everyone. And they're in, it's, really the scheduling is super complicated for pr production right now to get everyone tested. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but really Chicago it people does. Are, are considered for everything, but day players are expected to be very close by. Got you. And, and bumping back to an earlier question that same way, 
uh, with how long people should expect to be on check availability, possibly in the entire episode window, just to be safe? Like, should that be the outset expectation or what would you suggest? Cassidy, you look like you're going to answer. Oh, yeah. No, uh, we I know we sent a memo out to agents a little bit ago, just kind of giving them a heads up because before, you know, we were able to release uh, the actors as that role had been booked. Um, but now, like Claire was saying earlier, it's all contingent on the COVID test. Um, so we really need to hang on to everyone until we, um, we know for sure that everything's good to go. Um, you know, we're just trying to make it easier for production. They have a lot of they've got a lot of work this year trying to like make it safe for everyone and still um, so we are able to do these shows. So, um, I, you know, it's just important to just keep your agent updated if something comes up to let us know, but I would just be prepared to be on check avail a little longer than um, usual. That makes sense. Um, I want to ask you guys a question that we asked in last week's conversation with casting office with folks at O'Connor casting. What have been some of your pet peeves and, and things that have just consistently been the fly in the ointment of your casting process? What have you seen that people don't know that's their no-no besides like you've mentioned pets. Is there anything else that you've seen come up in spades that you just want to shake out of the tapes for people? Cameron, do you want to do, want to start? <laughs> sure. Um, I guess I just feel like, um, I think Cassidy said this earlier, but I feel like oftentimes there's a lot of tapes where it seems pretty obvious that the person didn't watch it through like the audio is pretty low or um, they're talking to their boyfriend at the end of after the scene. And so I guess I just feel like it's pretty like easy to watch um, the tape through and make sure that everything sounds good and looks good before uploading it. So that's definitely um, a, an important thing to do. Yeah, I think that people definitely need to be a little bit more critical about what they're sending. And so I would always say at least give yourself like three to four takes to do it so that you know that you're sending out the best product. Like you're getting to do it at home. So there's not a real reason that you should be like, let me rush this and get it there, you know? And um, yeah, please make the deadlines. <laughs> I think that's a pet peeve of like of people just not anticipating the deadline and it's just always like I need an extra hour and it's like yeah. <laughs> I would say my biggest pet peeve is um, when an actor is doing a scene and we're like oh my god this is great and then the last 10 seconds is them totally dying on camera walking up to their camera and turning it off I'm like ah please just like get quick time it's so easy just like edit that out before you send it because we can't we can't send that on so it's like either we have to go out of our way to edit your video which just takes more time because there's a lot of videos to watch um so it's like we can tell you didn't look at this before you sent it to us so it's just really important and I'll go back again to reading those instructions when we send them. It's so important. I know like actors see all this and it's like a novel. We're not trying to give you a novel. We really just want you to read these instructions. They're there for a reason. We want you to be great. And I think Tanisha was saying this earlier. This is like your moment to control how your audition looks when you send it to us. You could do 50 takes if you want. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Like you can make it look awesome. You can have your lighting it makes you look great. Like take advantage of this and, you know, invest in the tools you need and keep up with these evolving trends because uh, virtual auditioning is going to be the norm, I think for the foreseeable future. So, yeah. I, I guess I would just say- So people need to be learning how to edit these takes. People should not be submitting those to you and people should be watching their playback and maybe sending the top two takes, I would say, of their of their playback, maybe even phone a friend and run them by someone before they submit them to you for just, feedback if they have the time. I just wanna say one thing, you know, do do your homework. You know, this, I can't think of a more competitive, you know, it's this is so competitive and, um, and you can't half-ass this. You're not going to get a role half-assing it. You know, um, it, it, it's your product that you're sending out. So the lighting has to look good. You have to be prepared. You have to think about what you're wearing, at least at the top. You know, um, you, 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 can't, you can't just half-ass it and memorize the lines and be scruffy because you're hungover and you know what I mean? And, and read for a lawyer role and in your Adidas t-shirt. You just, it just doesn't, it doesn't fly. And, you know, 
with Chicago Fire, there's always somebody who's in shock or impaled or you know nailed to the side of the barn or what have you. Do the research about like, what does it look like when you're in shock? What does it look like when somebody's shot? What is the physical reaction? Because there's a lot of physicality um, in PD and fire and that makes all the difference in the world um, between an, a bad audition, an average audition and a really good audition are those beats when somebody's trying to breathe when they're, you know, like when you're in pain, when you're trying to breathe and like give information and like, um, experience the pain you're experiencing and you know like now on youtube you can find anything you can find any information at all so um i just i just you know what does it mean when you're having a seizure what does that look like i mean that makes the difference between a ho-hum audition and something really great is just that little bit of research and and don't read you know like make sure your reader is good because a bad reader can really really mess your audition up That's all. But people, people are home with mom and mom wants her next big break. Mom wants to play a swing for Severide. She really hopes she can uh, play him in next season. No, I hear you. And I think that's, that's a good point. And I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again. If you guys need help securing that reader, let us know if we can help with that. Um, we, will, we will do our best to give you the line readings that help you do the work that you need to do. There's so many good questions. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hit you with like two more. Do you have a preference about slates? Um, are those part of the instructions as far as how you want people to slate? No slates. No slates. No slates. No slates. No, no, right. no slates, no profiles, no slowly going down so we can see your knees and your shoes and back up again. We don't you, need- You that. don't want those beautiful full body shots that show that people uh, what their house slippers look like? Mm -hmm. Usually only for commercials, but for the, our shows, we do not want slates. For commercials, they usually do want a slate though. So we'll have instructions in there for that. Got it. Do you have a preference uh, about people standing, sitting? Is it mostly just based on the scene itself and what the scene requires? Or do you find that something works better for a lot of your tapes than others? I will say um, it's preferable if the framing is horizontal and it's stationary. So that goes back to having like a tripod um, and not holding it like a selfie those usually look the best. And I think it just depends on the scene. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah. you should be able to go up or down. Like you should have like a flexible thing. Cause sometimes the director's like, can you stand or can you sit? But yeah, yeah. you should know based on where you are in the scene. And it's, and it's a little bit of a version of being ready for anything too, which is, you know, especially if you're being brought into a live session, you don't know what they need or what they want you to do. So being able to have the option, of course, you want to choose your device that's going to give you the best camera and the best connection, but also the flexibility to accommodate what, what the creatives need. Um, you know, I don't want to abuse your time. There's so many good questions. Uh, if folks want to email me and I can do my best to, to answer the ones I know or ones that are really pressing and, and tripping you up. I can try and get an answer. So jess.jones at Coffer Center Chicago. And for those of you that are in Zoom, I will put that in the chat as well. Um, before I let you guys go, I mean, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for letting us know kind of what it looks like right now in this moment of time in your offices, in your virtual offices. Um, what kind of, if I could pass it around to each of you, what kind of imparting statement would you like to leave people with as they're in in their spaces, doing the work and doing their best from their own base camps. What is your closing? What are, what are your Jerry's final thoughts uh, that you can leave people with today? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, we miss you all. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this without sounding super cheesy, but I think about everybody a lot. I know, I, I just know how tough this is for everybody. And um, I don't know, just to know that we love you and we're thinking about you and we miss you. And, you know, um, don't, you know, don't just up your game now, guys, just up your game. I think, I think this is a real chance for people to do great work. And especially when you get to tape yourself and watch it and have your own, like you're in control of sending out the most beautiful tape. Um, and I just feel like the opportunity is a little better right now. So um, 
I just think this is a really good time to up your game and invest in the stuff you need to be the best actor you can be. And we look forward to seeing your work. Yeah, I would say just prepare, like do your best to prepare. Like Claire said before, do your research, you know, get the best equipment that you can get, get the best reader that you can get, you know, do it as many times as you can do it until you feel comfortable with it. And just like, you know, make sure you're sending out a good product, make sure you're 100% happy with what you send out before you send it to us or your agent. I would say um, keep staying creative. I know it's hard right now. A lot of us are, you know, confined to our homes, but you know, uh, we love getting the tapes and watching and it's kind of fun. You can kind of like peek into everyone's like <laughs> apartment, see how everyone's doing. Um, but I think, yeah, it's really important. The industry is changing. It's really important to keep up with it. Um, remote auditioning is the norm right now. Therefore, we've got to accept it. And that's like what Claire and Tanisha said, it, invest in those, um, the technology that you may need. Um, please, please watch your videos and read the instructions before you send it back to us. Um, yeah, just keep up with um, what's going on in the world and stay creative. We miss you guys in person. <laughs> Cameron gets the last word. Um, I would say, I guess, just like don't lose hope during this time because it's such a weird, hard time, especially for this industry. So just to keep pushing through and and if you get an audition opportunity take it really seriously because the opportunities are fewer and far between right now with covid so um you know be really like proud of yourself and and put your best foot forward and um just take it and run with it oh yeah and don't forget to vote thank you yeah, vote <laughs> vote indeed yeah let's uh let's rock the vote and get out there and and have your voice heard. Um, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. I miss you guys. I miss getting to talk to you and check in with you. And it's good to see all of your faces. I hope you are well, be well, stay well. Um, to everyone out here, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being with us. Um, let us know how we can be a resource to you virtually during this time. We have regular programs that we do offer. For those of you that are plugged in, you may know about these already, but every Wednesday we get together for coffee. Um, these questions that haven't been addressed or if you have additional questions, that's also a great place because if it's not something you know, odds are there's someone that's in the Zoom call that might be able to help you with it or has dealt with it themselves. Um, so every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central, we are on Zoom together for coffee. Thursdays we do virtual studio jams, which is once a week we're working you know, and flexing the muscle. Um, that's member led, member driven. So it is a small group, but members moderate it. And that's also a great time where we, you know, try to pull old sides and types of the material that these folks are casting so that you can kind of knock off the dust so that when the opportunity arises, you've had a panel of experts that help you hone in on your best process. Um, so we're doing our best to put things out there that help support your journey. If you have ideas or ways that we can do that specifically, don't hesitate to be in touch. Um, and Ladies, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you guys for being here and being a resource to the community like this. And I, I wish you all well. I hope I see you sooner than it's been. Um, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.